Welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar on thermal management with Comson Multiphysics. Today we are looking to thermal management in Comson Multiphysics. My name is Arpad Forberger and I'm an application engineer at Gamax Laboratory Solutions LTD. Today we are going to take a look at Comson and how to calculate temperature distribution due to internal heating. I will walk us through some models to give you a chance to see the software up close and see how it might help you in your work. Comsol is a multi-physics modeling simulation and application design environment where all of the steps of a simulation are integrated into one user interface from the initial setup to the solvers to post-processing to putting together a custom-built application. Comson model allows you to couple together physical effects the way they are in the real world, which we refer to as multiphysics. Once you have completed your Comson simulation, the software also allows you to create a customized app from the model, which enables you to deploy the analysis capabilities and results to collaborators, customers, or even colleagues around the world. This is our product suite. We have add-on products that can be combined with the Comsol Multiphysics Core Package to enable simulation of specific physics phenomena across a range of application areas. These can all be combined with each other. We have modules for electrical, fluid, heat, mechanical, acoustics and chemical simulations, as well as several multipurpose modules and tools for interfacing with external software. Comsol is very flexible it contains many predefined physics interfaces, but also allows you to define your own custom physics and equations. And today's webinar will focus on the functionality built in the heat transfer module, but also the ray optics, RF, ACDC, and the CFD module can be used for coupling to a multi-physics model. And also the chemical reaction engineering can be added to these simulations. Application areas can be radio frequency simulations or acoustics based on uh, acoustic simulations, ACDC to couple Joule heating into our model, couple to the CFD module to take into account non-isothermal flow, Later you will see such model here in the webinar. Pipe flow module can also be included if you are interested in thermal management in the underground heating systems. That's also one option here to be included. Or heat transfer in buildings and building applications and heat transfer in medical applications in biomedical sense. And also if you are interested in thermal contact, that's also possible to include in your models. So this is a snapshot from our built-in models that can be found at Comsol's web website and in the application library. Also, it couples the RF module to the heat transfer module to calculate radiation in a human head. That's another one for the pipe flow module that takes into account the underground heating effect for building heating. That's another one at the ray optics to take into account the ray propagation and the temperature increase due to the laser beam that travels through the lenses. And that's another one, it incorporates the multibody dynamics module so you can take into account the heat generated by friction between the two solid or rigid domains. You can also take into account our built-in advanced features like the moving mesh interface to do such simulations like here on the left hand side that's a dynamic wall heat exchanger you can find it in the built-in application libraries so you can define a sinusoidal wave of the mesh to take into account the increased surface of the area and that's another one that's a thermal ablation model that's ta that takes into account heating by laser and the removal of material of such high temperatures that's also possible with the built-in functionality and console multiphysics. And what we are looking today is we will import a PCB, a printed circuit board into our model 
and we would like to include the heat transfer by the generated internal components and we will investigate several effects whether it's a natural or a forced convection you can include thin and small objects you don't need to mesh volume geometries you can include surface or line elements there you can also include thermal contact Oops. and uh, we will investigate these features here so if we go to console we can uh, start by importing our model so here we have one component and under the geometry node you can see that we have one sub node that imports our printed circuit board that's a standard format and here in the layers you can select and deselect what kind of layer you would like to use during the import so here is already set up because we have limited time for this webinar that webinar is also recorded so you can uh, catch on so if you find it a bit fast you can review it later on so we have one geometry node with an import node to import our board next one is that we have the materials section so we have two different materials here one is the FR4 it is a typical circuit board material that's the green one here as you can see and the other parts are made of copper that's a general purpose material here for conducting surfaces okay and for the heat transfer we need to add the physics interface so we can add the physics and if we go to the heat transfer branch we select heat transfer in solids okay and what kind of boundary conditions are available so you can always check here by right clicking on the physics node we would like to add some inward heat flux to mimic the internal power dissipation and also include some heat flux by convection to the ambient temperature so we can add the heat flux and it's a heat rate we can include let's say it's one watt and we can simply select which surfaces we would like to include in our model so let's suppose we have these small surfaces that will generate heat it's one watt it's quite small for this fuse concept model that's more than enough for us and for the heat flux we can include uh, convective heat flux you have eight options you can see here four four for laminar case and four for turbulent case whether it's an external internal force or natural convection so if you don't want to mimic or stimulate the surrounding air you don't need to do that so you can also include quite easily if it's a natural convection but for simplicity and for speed we will use a scalar value here so we won't use any lookup tables so instead we put a scalar value here and we need to select what boundaries should be included in our selection so let's suppose that we use all boundaries so these boundaries will cooperate in the heat flux effect here through the ambient temperature also you can include weather station data so if your ambient data is not scalar value it can be any weather station data around the world so there are two databases one is more recent it's from 2017 and if your device operates it out somewhere in the wild so you can select uh, the weather station that you want to include let's say just pick up one and you can select the time what you want to use what could be the ambient temperature the surface radiation the wind speed dew point whatsoever but for simplicity we go for user defined values these are the constant scalar values okay and to look up the solved version we can see how the temperature is distributed in our circuit board so these are the default plots so you can take a look at the temperature plot 
we can change to the bottom and change the units to degrees of Celsius instead of Kelvins and we can change the color table to heat camera so with those little surfaces taking into account that generates one watt power this will be the final temperature distribution in our circuit board but if you have uh, heat sinks you can also include by drawing little surfaces and selecting the thin layers thin layer boundary conditions you can add these as conducting or radiating surfaces so you can set up the thickness so you don't need to create volume meshes just surface meshes so it can greatly reduce computational effort and simulation time without the need of creating 3d geometries so that's one nice option here so you can do surface mesh instead of volume meshes here Another model I would like to show you is the cooling of an electric component where we have these thin boundaries and thin layers so we can visualize it more properly and we have some advanced boundary features here as well. So the geometry looks like this one. So this is the enclosure here with an electric outlet and the circular hole for the fan and also we have lots of components inside the geometry we have some capacitors we have some heat sinks here so if we remove some of the boundaries we can look into the geometry and here you can see we have very thin layers thin structures that act as uh, heat sinks here so we don't need to create 3d volumes just surface meshes and in the back of this enclosure we have a grill and of course for a computational efficiency we don't need to put the little holes on it otherwise we would end up with a huge number of elements instead we will use an advanced boundary condition to apply a grill here so if we go to the heat transfer and the turbulent flow physics interface we will see the boundary conditions so now we have more than one boundary con more than one physics interface so we have lots of heat sources so we have these transistors and we have these capacitors it's set up like in the printed circuit board so we can define the total watt that is generated by these elements and we have an inflow and the grill and we have an outflow on the upper side because we have a fan here with a pressure curve defined and we have these lots of thin layers that act as uh, heat sinks in our models and the thickness of these layers compared to the other geometry quantities are small so we can use a simple surface mesh and we can set up manually the thickness of the layers that's all and from the fluid domain we have a fan with a predefined pressure curve data and we have a grill boundary condition on the other side of the enclosure that's it and we have a multi-physics coupling this multi-physics node will automatically pop up whenever you have more than one physics now we couple the two physics the heat transfer and the turbulent flow to take into account the coupling between the two parts and of course our material properties if we look into the table we have lots of different materials so if we pick up a particular material like air you can see that all of these material properties are functions functions of temperature and absolute pressure like the density in this case so that's because we use this multi-physics coupling so we couple the two physics interfaces the turbulent flow is coupled to the heat transfer to get a proper view of the air flowing around our enclosure and if we go to the results section we can see the temperature distribution here so this is the solved model so we can see where we have hotter parts the maximum temperature is somewhere over 70 degrees of celsius 
and we can also see how the air flows through our enclosure through the grills to the fan itself. Okay. All of these models can be found at our website. So if you visit gamaxlabsol.com, you can find out more there and you can connect us directly through our website or through our email addresses. So that wraps up my demo. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about console or trying out the software, the best place to look is our website. We also have recorded and on-site webinars so you can run and see these previously recorded ones in different areas and in different topics. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at our website and at our email addresses. So I close up this webinar. See you in our next webinar and thank you for your patience and interest.